Okay, so I am back. And as you notice, I just reiterated stage three. Um, and now we're going to get ready to start stage four. So let's recall, we're going to go to the unshaded triangles and we're finding the midpoints of those sides. And again, I'm going to use a new color so we can actually see what's going on here. So right over here, right over here. So we're going to connect the dots, la, 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 la. And it's a lot of fun and the kids are like, well, I can keep going and going. I'm like, yes, you can. You can totally keep going and going. That's what's the beauty of it. And when you can keep going and going, where do you go? And you go to infinity. So they actually, you know, when I taught those third and fourth grade classes, they actually did throw the word infinity out to me. And what's nice is you can actually see it. You can actually see infinity come to life. So as they're doing this, I would recommend you using colored pencils or markers for them. So that way they can see how each stage, you know, it's getting different. Okay. So um, you could also have them go to stage five. Some kids went to stage six and seven. They just kept going and going and like going really small. And, you know, it was pretty awesome. So um, just to, you know, you can talk about, well, what you can actually start off with and saying to them is, well, guys, you know, um, you can actually see that these triangles keep getting in smaller and smaller, but how many triangles can I actually put in there? And they're going to tell you, you can put infinitely many in there because you can keep doing these iterations. So that's kind of neat as, um, as you kind of embark on all that. So then the next thing is, is you can say what's happening to the size of the triangles. And they're going to say they keep getting in smaller and smaller. And if they're getting smaller and smaller, what are the, you know, areas of the triangle starting to approach and approaching zero. So now you've got infinity and zero kind of like coming to the party, which is kind of cool. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's see if we can start to fill out some of this chart. My advice is I would, um, let them start off with, uh, you know, doing stages two and three, show them stage one, but then going through stages two and three and let them figure out what four and five would be. Like maybe I would have them do the fifth triangle or the fifth iteration. And then even though, you know, they have that, it might be wise for them. So that'll help them better understand the number patterns as they emerge as I'm going to show you. So um, I'm going to go back to my pink because I love my pink. So if you look over here in stage one, which is this guy right here, Number of shaded triangles, we don't have any, so there's zero. Number of unshaded is one. The length of one side of the unshaded, we agreed earlier, is going to be one, and then the area is equal to one. So now what's interesting is now that we go into stage two, things start to change, which is kind of nice. So um, you might actually let them fill this in, see if they can actually fill this chart out based on that. Actually, I'm going to go back on what I said. See if they can start to fill out this chart because... The thing is, is once they know how the iterations work, let's see what they can come up with. And then that will spark a lot of ideas. So in the meantime, you and I will do it. So if I go to stage two, the number of shaded triangles, well, we have one of them. Okay. The number of unshaded triangles, there are three of them. If I go to the length of one side of the unshaded triangle, well, I know the length of this was one here. So it's still going to be one over here but I have cut it into two pieces. And since I've cut it into two pieces, hopefully they'll tell you that you literally cut it in half. So therefore we know that this is going to be one half here. And then if I say the area of one unshaded triangle in relation to the original, this is the original. Everything goes back to the original triangle that we started off with. So if I want to know if I want to take one unshaded, right? Here's one unshaded. It's up to the kids to recognize that when we broke this down, and we broke it down into four congruent triangles, okay? So you have four equal triangles that this thing got broken down into. And if I say the area of one of those in relation to the whole, since there are four, that means that it represents one-fourth. So now you can really start getting, getting into like fractions and things like that. Let's go to uh, stage three. So in stage three, we have the number of shaded triangles. This time, the shaded triangles, there are four of them. The number of unshaded triangles is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine of those. The length of one unshaded, the length of one side of one unshaded triangle. So if we go back here again, the length of this side is one, but you can ask them how many pieces did you break it down into this time? And if they say four, and then you can say that means that each one must represent one fourth of the whole. So you can put a one fourth in there. And then finally, the area of one unshaded triangle in relation to the original shaded triangle, okay? So if you take one unshaded triangle, right, you take one unshaded, so I have one unshaded right here, 
in relation to the big one over here, I have a feeling here's where your kids are going to get uh, stuck. What they're going to do is they're going to add up how many triangles there are in here. And if you add up how many triangles there are, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They're going to say there's 13. That's what they're going to say. So this is going to be your turn to say, are they all the same size and shape, i.e., are they equal or congruent to each other? And, you know, because I know they're going to put um, 1 13th in here. The first thing that they're going to throw in here is a 1 13th. And that is not true because not all of them are the same exact size. So what you might want to do then is you're going to have them take a look at. Come on, you pencil. Okay, we're going to have them take a look at is that this triangle right here, right? We're looking for one unshaded. All of the unshaded are all the same size, but all of the shaded are not. So what you might want them to do is to say, well, take this guy right here. If you take this piece right here, right, in here, how many of the unshaded triangles will fit in there? Because you want them to find out how many of these fit into the whole picture. And technically what you could do is have them break it down into a triangle like so. So therefore, they can go ahead and recognize that in here, in this triangle right here, there are four. In this triangle here, there are four. In the middle here, there are four. In here, there are middle. There are four. So in fact, there are not 13. There are in fact 16 of those small triangles that fit into the big one. So that means then it represents one sixteenth of the um, large triangle. So that's going to take some time for them to figure out, and and get, and I would give them that time and have them talk to each other about how do you break this down into these shapes so that they come out to equal that shape. So I would have a lot of dialogue with the kids amongst themselves to say, hey, you can break it down like this and actually recognizing that uh, four of these fit into this guy right here and almost seeing that there's, you know, you came from here, right? So we came from here and when we came over here, you know, this guy is the same size as this guy. This guy is simply that guy over here. This right over here was broken down into four pieces over here. So let them look from stage to stage to see what actually happened, because I think that's going to be really fruitful, okay? So now let's go into stage four. And in stage four, you have the number of shaded triangles. This time, if you look at the number of shaded triangles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're going to put a 13 in here. Um, we look at the number of unshaded triangles. The number of unshaded triangles is, if you look over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And if you count in here, and if you look at how it's actually broken down, there's three in this um, triangle, there's three in this one, three in this one, you know, three in this one, three in this one, here and here, here and here, and there's nine of them, so there's actually 27. So you might actually have the kids do the grouping. They might actually see that, like let them identify that you have a bunch of triangles within other triangles. So that's kind of cool. And then we can go again so the length of one side now of an unshaded triangle, again, this is one. And again, it's up to the kids to recognize that this time it's been broken down into eight pieces. So if it's broken down into eight pieces, each one represents one eighth of the whole. So that becomes a one eighth. And then again, we're talking about the area of one. I'm going to do this in black this time because it might be better. The, uh, the area of one of these in relation to this big guy right over here, right? So how many of these little guys are going to be able to fit into that big guy right over there, right? And if we can figure out how many of those there are, then we can go ahead and determine what fraction this little guy takes up in, of the entire thing. So the cool thing that you might have your kids do, again, let them figure it out. Let them go play. And, you know, and when you say it, you want the triangles to be the same size as the, sh as the unshaded because all the ones that are shaded are not exactly the same size. So you can have them go ahead and look at this, you know, and break it down into these smaller triangles here. And you can say three unshaded take up that space, you know, or four, I'm sorry, four triangles take up that space. I mean, I don't like what I have there. It looks sloppy. That four um, small triangles um, take up that space right in here. There's four triangles that take up that space in here, right? Four in here, four in here, and so forth. So if the kids are starting to see that, then they'll be able to, add up like around here there's four you know in here there's four and because this is congruent to this this is going to be four this is going to be four this whole thing is four and again you're letting them see 
And maybe what I'm doing is going to make you come up with an even better way to do this because you do this on a day-to-day basis. And again, you know, um, you can just go ahead and figure out what it is. Like if you do the guy in the center, and again, you can go ahead and break that down like so and say, well, four, 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 and four. So you can say, well, how many of those are there? And you're going to say to yourself, wahoo, there are 64. So this is one over 64. Now, it's at this time, you are the teacher. You know your kids better than anybody. So some of them you might say, go make a stage five, you know, in order to go ahead and fill out the next column, okay? Because if you have them do that, I think that's going to be really important because from that they'll be able to elicit what's happening. But what's really cool is we're going to, um, you're adding um, three to this one, you're adding nine to this one, right? So this one here, that's a, this is a really interesting number pattern. And I think the one below is actually going to help better understand what the top one is going to be. So down here, you have one, three, nine, 27. There is a really good chance that if your kids know their, um, times tables that they're going to recognize that you're multiplying by three every time. Let me use black here, that you're multiplying by three every time by three, that you're multiplying by three. So 27 times three, if you do it, you're going to wind up with 81 unshaded triangles. So by the time you go into stage five and you start partitioning down stage five, there's going to be 81 unshaded triangles. Then the length of one side of an unshaded triangle, if you say to them, what's happening every time here, because you're finding the midpoints, you can have a conversation about midpoints because we found the midpoints of the sides in each iteration that we did, and that affected the length of the side here. So for us, what's kind of cool is that, you know, you're cutting this in half, and then you're cutting it in half again, and then you're cutting it in half again. So as you're going through, you're looking at these numbers, 2, 4, 8. So maybe they're like, hopefully they'll be like, oh, you're multiplying by 2 every time. And actually, the kids recognize that, so the next one is going to be a 16th. Once they found these patterns, they just I just want you to know that when I did this with the fourth graders, they just kept wanting to go on and on and on. They're like, I'm going to keep multiplying this by 3. And they got up to like 243. They kept multiplying by 3. And over here, they recognize that the denominator keeps getting multiplied by 2. And then again, what's nice is if they know the denominator is getting multiplied by 2, you can ask them, well, what's the numerator you're getting multiplied by? And you're going to say, you're getting multiplied by 1. So we're multiplying by a half every time. So now you can, there's your introduction to frat, you're multiplying by a half to get from one spot to another, to get from one spot to another, which is kind of cool. And then you can give them the big daddy over here of recognizing what is going on here. You know, you're going from four to 16 to uh, 64 in your denominator. There's a good chance for the kids who have really good uh, multiplication skills are going to know that you're multiplying by four on this one in the denominator and having a really good time with that. So this is a really good start to how fractions work. Now what's more is we're going to talk about, when we talk about areas, we can get into congruency and things like that. And when we do that, it's going to be kind of neat.